Have you ever thought about the difference between feeling overwhelmed and being overwhelmed? I think you can feel overwhelmed on a daily basis, just with the hustle and bustle of school, work, relationships, stress. But to be overwhelmed takes something divine. Intervention from above. It's sublime because you're taken up into something that's greater than you are. There's something about nature and grace that just makes everything so much more real. And we're going to experience that because we're going on. I think one of our biggest problems today is a lack of purpose in life. You can be caught up in so many things moving from here to there, but without a real direction. Just getting ready for the ferry. Just preparing. Yeah. Rose chicken. Yeah. Who knew? It's Where are we going, boys? We're going to Cherbourg, Cherbourg in France. So, Jack, are, the, um, the, are you expecting this? No, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> it's like cruise. This is like <laughs> nice. <laughs> We're starting this pilgrimage on a boat, a massive hunk of steel directed by a tiny little instrument called the rudder. It leaves the port, but if the rudder's off just a little bit, it's not gonna make it to its destination. The whole idea behind going on pilgrimage is that to get back on track. Maybe our decisions up until now have been made off of whims or feelings, or what I think is right, but not what on he actually wants of me. I think the direction this pilgrimage can come from three key elements. A blessed mother, sacrifice, and the Eucharist. So I suppose on this pilgrimage I'm just trying to kind of figure out what's the next step for it that the Lord wants for me. I know I'm fairly confident that he wants me to be a priest, but I just uh, I'd like to get a bit more uh, of a kind of guidance as to where exactly that, that is that is to be. And so just hope to get a bit more of a stronger appreciation for Our Lady in, in my own life. All right, go for it. Wait, this? Yeah. So this is for one reason, one reason only. And I would say for the crack. Okay. All right, So we got a group of 15 guys, two weeks, two cars, two different countries. It's going to be an amazing pilgrimage. We used to have one from Jersey, the island off of North France. My dad had one. He would milk it every morning at 4 o'clock in the morning. And we're off the ferry. We are in France. Oui. Oui.
appeared in the sky of Pont Man to four children. She gave a message of prayer and hope. I'm Jack, and I'm 19 years of age, and I am from Cork. I didn't really know at the time what my main prayer was going to be on this pilgrimage, but I suppose I was, generally I wanted a spiritual boost. I knew that it would give me, it would bring me closer to God again. I've been praying a lot, and I think my main prayer for this time on this pilgrimage is going to be about my vocation and where God wants to lead me in the future, and for abandonment of you know, kind of material things and everything else, and, and I may be brought closer to Him and to His love. I remember just like, we just got like these French baguettes, went into the street and just like, probably the most delicious sandwiches ever. And we were just there like, got like ham sandwiches, just put ham cheese and just, they were so this amazing. This is the French baguette, right? I'm sorry if there's any Spanish listening, but the French baguettes are so nice. And you can like squeeze it, right? And it makes it even like smaller and more manageable. But I think the Italian upgrade is like, they put it through like a toaster and it becomes toasted. So according to Luke, when you squeeze stuff, things become smaller. We learned that because we're, we, have, we don't have a lot of space and we're trying to put stuff in the, <laughs> the Exodus box. We found out if you squeeze it, it makes it smaller. I was, I knew we were gonna have a lot of fun. That was, there's no question about it, but something I really, really needed was to have a bit of discipline in my life, to have a proper schedule and have like the self-control to stick to that schedule. And coming here, this was real, it was really helping me because learning about Saint. Um... Who is the Montfort? Okay, he didn't learn nothing. <laughs> Saint Louis the Montfort. Like the fact that he didn't care what other people thought of him. That was that was huge for me because being in a school and being in a class where the only other Catholic won't talk to us. Like having to spend things and you know it's tough really, and trying not to go with the crowd and knowing that there's a saint out there who just didn't care. We're on pilgrimage, guys, so we're probably gonna get shaken up a bit. We're gonna probably get taken out of our comfort zones. And we're probably gonna be asked to do big things. The word docility literally means, not literally, sorry, but like to get a good image of docility means to be daring. Because to be open to the Holy Spirit and to let him break into your life is gonna actually mean something daring. You are gonna have to take some steps that are gonna be scary for you and that you're not gonna wanna take. You're gonna wanna actually, you're gonna be put, you put yourself before the Lord and asking him to ask you things that you're probably afraid to listen to, probably terrified. I started discovering what a real pilgrimage was after some time. Before, before I went, I just kind of saw it as like, maybe a, a trip where we would see kind of famous Catholic sites, go to church mass. I didn't really know, again, I didn't know what to expect. We learned very quickly, at, when we arrived in Pont Main, we had a, a homily uh, from Father Luke, and he, he spoke about just being docile to the will of the Lord, and to expect certain challenges and just walking through those and find out where God is. From my, my experience, a pilgrimage was just finding where God is and how he, he reacts with us. I think as the pilgrimage goes on, you kind of find out where God is in your life. Um, if he's your number one, you know, where he is in your heart. I don't know if they've truly understood what the Catholic faith is because it is 100% availability to God, 100%. And that's what docility is. Be done unto me according to your word. We say that every morning, but do you really say that? What if he asks you something that you don't want? What if he asks you something scary? That's why docility is daring. You're gonna have to take a step. You're gonna have to be able to sacrifice things that you probably hold dear to you or that you think are your plans or your way of life. You're gonna have to be available to sacrifice things. And that's what the pilgrimage opens us up to. It's amazing. As St. Louis de Montfort said, just like the incarnation, all big things start with a Hail Mary. Think about your mom. She was most likely present at your most important moments. Your birth, your first step, probably your first words. Moms don't miss or forget those moments. Our last Marian stop in France was at the Sanctuary of Lourdes, a place whose message can be summed up in prayer, poverty, and penance. Our Blessed Mother chose a poor, ignorant, asthmatic 14-year-old Bernadette to get this message across to our children that we have to return to a life of prayer, live more simply in poverty, 
and do more penance for the conversion of sinners. I hadn't been alerts before and we like, there's been like a real theme of like Our Lady and the Rosary especially and I think that's been like a huge uh, growth area for me. Like I'm pretty, I've got a pretty strong devotion and relationship with our, with our Heavenly Mother but um, the the emphasis on like how she like how, how we can draw strength from that rosary and, and uh, the consistency of that and like that real relationship like how it can help us grow so much. Everywhere we went I think has been a real a real grace like we were to Lourdes we were in the Bats in Lourdes I got a massive grace there um, just a real sense of presence of Our Lady being there. We did the bathing in the spring after, after I went into the water, I just felt like a profound peace after, um, I don't know, I mean, I guess I just felt really close to Mary, and um, yeah, after I just had to go straight to the Adoration Chapel, because I, I just felt like Mary wanted me to go there, and I just felt a great peace, and I felt a great peace ever since. how it can help us grow so much has been a huge theme. So especially in Lourdes, when we went to the baths and the guys recommended like praying for, if we don't have a physical illness, like an interior healing. And I prayed for that and I think I experienced that in like a, and a healing in some past wounds that has just really helped me to like completely give everything to this retreat and to my relationship with Mary has been beautiful. What's, what's happening? What's gonna happen actually? We're gonna die. Okay, nice. Kind of <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna be so alive up there, you know? It's gonna be cold, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna live. Our Lady Mount Carmel, Queen and Mother! Bless our pilgrimage! I guess like to be honest, like I didn't even really know it was a pilgrimage. I was just sort of told hiking trip. A couple other things. I was pumped, I was excited, I was um, I love hiking. And so I was like, oh, this is going to be great. And like, I met the home of the mother priests and brothers and like, it was great people. So I was like, yeah, it's going to be great. And so getting here, like learning it's a pilgrimage. I was like, oh, sweet. That's, that's even better. <laughs> Exceeded all of my expectations, like from the moment I got in the car, um, like just to be like sort of blown out of the water by like the, the noise and the joy and like the, the excitement of the group was just incredible. Do you see this? We're all like sheep in this life and especially on this pilgrimage. Like but a sheep astray is a bad sheep because he's so stupid, he could literally just walk off a cliff and you wouldn't even know it. That's why you need a good shepherd. Here's a good, look, I'm not the good shepherd, but I do have a stick that kind of looks like a, I should give it to Brother Ben because he's the shepherd, he's leading us. It says here, from the refuge, take the signposted Mark trail, which leads head left he into is the, good the shepherd. sum woodland he's after good. the fountain. I mean, have you ever seen so many sheep? Like, it's a sea of sheep. What do you think? Is this pretty epic? Yeah. I think they're rams, are they? They're not sheep. Watch out, they could just ram you. Welcome back to the mountain. Um, we are here with company of two epic netters. If you guys haven't heard about net, check it out. Net.com, I'm assuming. Uh, Sorry, netministries.ie. That's if you want to do the Irish. And it's basically a year of your life that you give to the Lord and you do missions. It's kind of lighting a fire, you know, while you're doing amazing things. So, we got a man, Chris, here from Canada. Woo! C A D A. No. C A N A. D A. Okay, that's how you spell Canada. And we're coming up to the first ridge on this mountain. So, that's why we're kind of getting excited because. It's gonna be a ridge walking day where you go across the ridge and like apparently you're supposed to be able to look down left and right and see God's creation below you. So I'd say the boys are a little bit tired. They, we almost made it there, but we're just sitting down to get a little breather. We're gonna go over here and we're gonna get a little moral, uh, 
Moro, is that what you call it? Or the moral of the story. So your man Maddie lost, well we didn't lose, he misplaced his wallet, right? I did, yeah. And if his parents are watching right now, like, we're just saying, <laughs> um, I am a priest, so I, I forgave him. <laughs> yeah, please forgive me, Dad, I think I'm God, so sorry. You should forgive him if you're watching this as well. Yeah. But the idea is that his wallet got lost, he get canceled his credit cards this morning. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you're not thinking about that anymore, no? No. So what are you thinking about? I'm thinking about this hike and what Jesus is going to do on it, so. Yeah, so he's, he's doing this hike with that Lord. So you can see in the background there's that ridge right there. We're making our way to it. It's going to be really, really epic. We have our mayo man too because you wouldn't be able to do this without a mayo man. There's two, there's two actually. There's three. There's three. Three? Yeah, but this is the mayo man of the trip. So Ronan Armstrong has been pretty excited about this whole thing, getting to the top. He did uh, 10 pull-ups, but he did them the hard way. So you want to like get a... What? Do you want to talk about that, like exercise? Yeah, it was just... I suppose a bit of warm up for the old trip, you know? Yeah, he. Get the blood flowing. He get the blood flowing, so it's like a spiritual uh, muscle, because God's not into muscles, you guys. He's not into, like, appearances. Eugene, you listen to this. Spiritual muscles. Uh, God, God, doesn't, God doesn't look at your muscles, He looks at your heart. But the funny thing is, your heart is a muscle. <laughs> There's something about the mountain that I think changes you from a snowflake to a rock. We're so used to our comforts and anything that's contradictory to that comfort makes us squirm and squeal. And it softens our will to the point where we're not actually capable of doing hard things because we're so used to giving in to what our will or our whims want of us. But on the mountain, you can't do that. You have to keep going. Even when everything in you is hurting, you're sweating, the end seems so far away, which is the summit, but you have to keep taking steps, step after step, until you're actually counting your steps. When you get to the top, your shirt's soaking wet from the sweat. Your muscles are aching. When you sit down, you can actually just breathe in and relax, taking in this incredible view that you have before you. It all makes sense. It all pays off. And the thing is, on our pilgrimage, we're having mass on the top of these mountains, which was just taking it to a different level. You are contemplating creation, seeing the massiveness of the creator. But then when you're kneeling down before the Eucharist, you just see how small this creator becomes for his creature, which is you. And it fills you with this sublime peace that just overcomes and overtakes everything and anything you've ever experienced. It's the most real thing that you can experience. It's not a peace that you get from slouching on the couch, eating Pringles, watching the game, giving in to your comfort, giving in to your whims, saying yes to the flesh. It's a peace that comes from this war that you had with the flesh, overcoming yourself with this strenuous hike, and then sitting before the Lord, the Prince of Peace in the Eucharist. It's unexplainable. It's overwhelming. That's what you experience. And that's what we were getting on the tops of these mountains in the Pyrenees. When we, when, we, when we got to the top of the mountain, like we kind of did a, like a trail through the mountains, and when we got to the top, it was a place perfect for, for having the mass up there. You could see all around. It was like a panoramic view of the whole of the, the area, the Pyrenees and stuff. It was just amazing. I remember as well, afterwards, we had maybe half an hour or so of, of adoration. It was just a peace there. And I remember Father Luke blessed, I think, the whole, like when he was doing the benediction, he kind of went all around to bless all the area as well, the creation. It was a reminder that, like, like God created all of this. Here he is on the top of the mountain. It kind of reminds you as God is like the head of all, of everything, of all creation. And this is his, the work of his hands. It was incredible. The bottom line is, is having a personal encounter with, with Christ in, the, in this pilgrimage. Finding, you know, what's holding us back from having, having Jesus in the center. What's our obstacles? It's good, it's a good purifying experience as well because you're offering up sacrifices, you're going on long hikes, some things don't work out as planned so you kind of just have to trust in the Lord. We'll just uh, lighten the fire. 
And uh, Father Luke is the, currently the, the flamethrower. Oh, wow. so and Eugene is, is sort of the master, master of lightning. Yeah, they You see, that's why you see this. They just, they, they just concentrate on water. So He's having a bonding moment right now. Coming down the hill and on Providence, through Providence, we found a shack just out in the middle of nowhere. And we, we ended up staying there. And we're eating like on the candlelight because Eugene's idea. Not too. Because Eugene's already been here, so he already knows how to do it. In the name of Jesus. And when I feel like I'm all alone. I got my Lord, he's one in three, so he's taking me to different heights of me to see. I'm like the blind man trying to be. All I know I have him. Knows he needs me, so this is it, Lord. I bow before His knees. This is creation. I know you're made for generations, generations. Because this is my crew. This is my way. This is what I'm rolling with every single day. So I said it's okay, because this ain't something that you're spending. It's something that you're lending, because you're gonna find it back in the next life. So get that strike. You put it back in that fire and say I'm done with this. I'm like Bilbo leaving the Shire. I wanna find these new lands. I wanna find these new hopes. So I'm saying yes to my vocation, so I can say I'm not gonna choke in the moment. We went to the Py Pyrenees two days in a row and it turned out to be probably more strenuous than the first day. But I thought we were going to go to the lake and like kind of chill out. Uh, yeah. I was really not, normally I'm ready to go for when it comes to hiking, but I really was not looking forward to that one. As I said to the guys before, like I'm a, I'm a football guy, like I'm supposed to be physically fit and things like that, but I, uh, I, I struggled with the mountains at times. And seeing like how brothers can like push you on and get you further, I think was a great grace from God, and I think can apply a lot to my spiritual life. But like that day for me, I, even though it was unexpected, it was uh, like a day that like I definitely got a lot from because uh, we, we 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 climbed the mountain for about maybe two hours, and I was really struggling at the top. Like I really kind of found it hard, and. Um, when I was climbing the mountain, I kind of like started thinking about about myself a lot. I was just thinking like, oh, you know, like, oh, why am I going through this kind of suffering? And you know, like, I'm just kind of self-centered thoughts. But then all of a sudden, it kind of struck me. Then, for some reason, on the on the hike as I got up to the top, that um, that like all the suffering that Jesus went through on the way of the cross is is just like it makes everything look in perspective look so 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 like minor. It was a struggle. But uh, one of the guys in the group, he, he like stuck with me and he like really like pushed me to keep going. Like that whole aspect of brotherhood, the feeling of like, like, yes, like this is what I'm, I'm meant to be doing. And yes, it's hard, but like it's, it's time to keep going. Just go, go for the top. Because if I, if I don't go for the top, then like what am I going to go for? Like there's, there's, there's no point in settling for anything less. Yeah, and like making it to the top was like, it was incredible. It was, it was beautiful and like, and being able to have mass up there was like, yeah, it was just a really, really special experience. Got a lot from that, that, that hike, like just going through the, like the, the, the suffering of going all the way up to the top and you didn't really want to. Uh, and then finally reaching the top and saying mass, uh, even though we didn't get to do a lot with the, with the lake, we didn't get to go for a swim or anything because it was so cold, but going to say the mass at the top in such a spectacular view, was, it was unreal. And I got a very strong spiritual presence at the top, you know, like, it was, it was Sunday, it was brilliant. Pilgrimage is a journey which can be sometimes uncomfortable or comfortable, it's a spiritual journey with the aim and the ambition is to grow closer to God. So people wonder who is God or what is God, or people wonder, and you see the problem is, is nobody wants to go that extra step to see who God is, because there's a factor of fear there. 
And I think that's what a pilgrimage does for you. A pilgrimage lets you go that far. Tell you the story how I hurt my ankle. Oh, I like that. I love it. Here, Vlad, and Precious, and it was it was a real peace. I think it's going to help me integrate myself into the prayer life.